Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and it is that time of year. At the end of the year, end of 2023, we're gonna be rolling out our favorite things list of videos uh, in case you need some product recommendations, still fill your stockings, or buy something nice for yourself. But these are some of my favorite products and gear that I've used this year. Got some tech, got some tools, got some toys, and yes, some coffee table books as well. So we're gonna start off with some tech, uh, and in the VR space, uh, two VR headsets really became my favorite ones to use this year. First was the Big Screen Beyond, the dedicated PC VR headset from the folks at Big Screen VR. It's a high-end, high-resolution, uh, micro OLED uh, headset that's really just a uh, class above the other PC VR headsets currently available at that price point using Steam VR tracking. Love that. That's my daily driver for PC VR games, but of course, also released this year was Meta's Quest 3. And that might be the best overall, best gaming or best VR headset in general. The Quest 3 really surprised me with what features and tech and they put into the Quest 3 to make it a real viable alternative and honestly better in many ways than the Quest Pro they released last year. The pass-through image quality is so much better. It makes it comfortable to use while not being locked into VR. If you're just browsing the web, using their applications, uh, watching video, for example. And the processor has really impressed me in terms of the games that you can run locally on here. From Assassin's Creed Nexus to newly released titles like Arizona Sunshine 2 and one of my favorites, LEGO Brick Tales VR. Those games look so good running locally in headset. And with the recent release of Steam Link from Valve for the Quest ecosystem of headsets, it's easier than ever now to have high quality wireless gaming streaming from your PC uh, gaming system to play, again, Half-Life Alex over and over again uh, on the Quest. Quest 2 or Quest 3 headsets. So highly recommended. I think the entry SKU with uh, the, the amount of storage um, is still my preferred buy, and I do recommend the uh, the Elite head strap accessory as well for extra comfort. Uh, moving on to, well, 3D printing. Now this is the Bamboo A1 3D printer that was just launched, but it's not necessarily this printer itself, which I do recommend that I think is my favorite thing, but in terms of 2023, it really was a banner year for FDM printing. I spent a couple of years really enamored with resin printing, testing dozens of resin printers and their new models every other month. And the quality of those prints, yes, are still fantastic for tabletop miniatures, for hand props, for sculptures. But this year I did so much less resin printing and so much more FDM printing. And uh, as Adam has talked about, the FDM, the quality of the FDM printers, whether it's using Core XY systems or uh, even bed slingers, like here are the A1, whether it's using Prusa's uh, Prusa 4, um, now with input shaping, but things like input shaping, things like the ecosystem of models that you can get from Thingiverse, from Printables, and even from uh, Bamboo's Maker World now, make it so easy to get started in the FDM printing. There's no messy cleanup that you have with resin printing. Um, there's tons of cheap filament you can buy at well under $20 a spool, and with printers like from the Bamboo Labs, uh, whether it's their P1P, their A1 Mini, or the A1, uh, they're really almost plug and play appliances now. The amount of reliability um, that these printers offer makes it so that you're doing much more printing and much less repairing and maintenance on your printers, which used to be what the hobby was all about. The community's really exploded, and I've made a ton of friends online from plenty of modelers and designers who share their files and have uh, Patreons and, um, and, and, and accounts on printables that you can back um, and really feels like a wonderful, wonderful time for FDM printing if you haven't got in before. And more so, never now, now that I have kids in school, I've been talking to their parents and getting them into 3D printing and I can actually recommend 3D printers. I don't feel like I have to be their tech support as well. So the Bamboo Lab class of printers, what the printers coming out from Creality, from Prusa, uh, uh, now is a perfect time to jump in. Okay, moving on to some gaming. A lot of handhelds this season. There was the Steam OLED, of course, which I love, but you may be surprised that one of my favorite things this year is actually the PlayStation Portal that I reviewed uh, about a month ago. Um, 
It's still kind of controversial online. If you don't have a PS5, you may not understand why this is appealing, but after spending a bunch of time with this, this is how I play my PS5 now. I don't want to necessarily monopolize the big screen TV in the living room. If I'm sitting down, I'm thinking about playing a console game, turning on the big screen TV means it's a commitment. I'm going to spend an hour, two hours dedicating the game, and I just don't have that in my life right now. I got to take care of the kids, take care of the family, do, do stuff for work. And so with the PS Portal, which is a streaming system where I can stream the game running locally on my PS5 over either home um, wireless internet or over uh, ISP to remotely like here at the office, I can actually play my PS5 games anywhere on the go. And that allows for these, the kind of Nintendo Switch-like pick up and play sessions. So even if I'm playing a AAA game like Spider-Man, even if I'm playing God of War, I can pick it up and play for 15 minutes, play for 20 minutes and set it back down and not feel like I'm committing to a full uh, AAA gaming session, which is it's a complete change of mindset. Uh, the quality of the streaming is fantastic. There is latency if you're going to be streaming longer distances or doing it over 5G. But the ergonomics of the PS Portal, of having these DualSense controllers on the side, um, just it surprises me every time I pick it up and I'm looking at, on this 8-inch screen, 1080p, 60 screen, the equivalent of these high-end PS5 graphics that without streaming, wouldn't be possible to run locally on a handheld. So really, really enjoying the system. And yes, I know parents and consumers may potentially be confused going into you know, your targets, your best buys, and seeing this and not realizing that you need a PS5 port. But right now, it's sold out everywhere. So I think there's plenty of demand, people who know what they're getting into with the PS portal right now. OK, from tech to some tools, i got tool tools I want to recommend. Uh, one is this OmniFixo helping hand, hand soldering stand. Um, this has been just an essential part of my tabletop workshop, whether soldering you know, LED strands uh, or uh, uh, LED filament sticks, um, doing modifications to small toys. Uh, this is just a beautifully designed soldering stand with these magnetically attached helping hands um, and the, this clamp system that is wonderful because it's these parallel grips uh, with um, these softener dampeners on here that just are wonderful for holding wires, for delicately holding things in any orientation. And the best part is once you securely clamp onto uh, whatever you're soldering, it's really easy to manipulate it on this magne magnetic ball joint. So it's really wonderfully designed. And it also folds up and works for travel. So you can also 3D print a case for it. You can put your USB soldering iron in here and the OmniFixo. It all fits compactly and stores away. Uh, really an essential tool. I find it's changed how much fun you can have with tiny electronics and soldering projects. Uh, speaking of fun, the other tool I want to recommend, it's actually something that came out, I want to say, over 10 years ago. And it's this little drill. This is from Tamiya maker of fine model kits and model paints. And this is their Tamiya Handy Series line of tools. This is their tiny electrical drill, uh, and it itself is a kit. So like I said, this has been around for a while. I've seen it on modeler, RC Modelers forums. I've seen it on the RPF. People use this to, to you know, uh, punch out holes uh, for fiber optics, but uh, super fun to put together in about 45 minutes or so, and runs on two AA batteries, and is an effective little drill with enough gearing on here to give it some good power. It's, it's not super high RPM. You don't always need a Dremel-like rotary tool for all your uh, drilling needs, uh, although you can uh, adapt this and use a Dremel collet, uh, or even 3D print your own tiny collet to use really tiny uh, pin vise drills if you want to go real fine. The small, I believe, two millimeter drill they include here. It's a little big for uh, more of my, uh, most of my needs, um, but having this just on the table, not needing to pull out the full rotary tool, has been really fun as well. Uh, so much fun that I picked up a second one. This is their electric candy router, same form factor, same system, different gearing system, has a little router and bit um, that you can use on your plastic model toys or tiny uh, woodworking projects as well. You get them for about 30 bucks, really fun little project to have as a tool. 
Okay, moving over to toys. Only have actually one toy to recommend this year, and it is this from Hasbro. It's their Mandalorian N1 Starfighter. It's his new ship from the latest season of The Mandalorian, RIP Razor Crest. Sorry for spoilers if you haven't seen the show, but I just love the design of this ship. Of course, it's a refit of uh, the Starfighter from Phantom Menace. Mando takes it over, does a whole paint scheme, a repaint on it to make it chrome. The paint, paint finish here is more silver than chrome. There's some kind of brushed aluminum here, um, but it does come with a tiny Mando and Grogu. Um, and the cockpit is openable. I do love all the engine detail. Hasbro does really fine works with their Star Wars vehicles. Um, and this actually is not too difficult to take apart. And so one of the things I do plan on doing in the future is doing a full disassembly, which I've already actually disassembled uh, previously just to see how well it comes apart. Um, and put it back together and do a whole repaint of the whole thing using some chrome paint. Some of those chrome paints that I saw Adam using when we did the Starfield project earlier this year. Definitely use maybe a little, a little more weathering in the inside of the engines and maybe some lighting as well on the engines here. But a wonderful model. I haven't seen a really good model kit of the N1 Starfighter at this scale. Um, so to have this pretty just out of the box, looking great at a little over $100. Um, just a wonderful toy from Hasbro. All right, wrapping things up with a few coffee table books, two of them. Uh, one is, well, like I mentioned earlier, I have kids at the house and my oldest is five years old right now. And his favorite word is why. His favorite word is why. He's always asking questions. Uh, and so one of the ways, I mean, he wants to know how the world works. And so getting this book has been a godsend. It's How Things Work by Theodore Gray. Uh, Adam recommended a newer version of uh, this book from the series of books from Theodore Gray earlier this year. But this is an older one. It's a more basic one and it's uh, wonderful f photos and of cross sections of um, of clear case electronics for its basic things, you know, locks, sewing machines, uh, how clothes are made, how how uh, how alarms and and basic phones and watches. Um, with again, wonderful photos, lots of text here, so we don't read all of it. We use it more as a picture book. And it's been one of our favorite books to uh, read on the weekends and go to bedtime to, um, looking at a new picture, a new category every day um, and checking things out. There's a newer uh, book in this series, I think just released just on tools. Um, but uh, if you don't have any in this series, highly recommend this one, How Things Work by Theodore Gray. The other coffee table book I wanna recommend is a Dune coffee table book. Now, in a different world, we would have Dune Part 2 out in theaters by now, but that's pushed out till, till March. So uh, in the meantime, if you are looking for a Dune fix, I recommend this book. This is Dune Part 1, uh, The Photography. And it's from the still uh, the unit photographer from the first film, uh, Chiabella James. Um, and it's all of, well, not all of, but it's many hundreds of her photos on set, the publicity stills, the uh, the candid photos, um, the job of a unit still photographer on a movie set is one of the most incredible jobs. They have to be invisible and yet charismatic. They have to engage and be friendly with the crew, with the actors, and because they're capturing, they're documenting, they're creating these documents of the story that's being, of the story of film production, of the story that's being told. And on the film sets that we've been on to watch the, the unit photographers maneuver around, even when uh, filming's happening during downtime and capture these moments that sometimes are, you know, outside of like a behind the scenes featurette are for the crew and for the actors. These are their cherished memories of that time making the film and to capture for fans of the film or of those filmmakers, what it's like to be on a set that is such an incredible achievement and this book does that for Dune, the first film. So it's on location, it's in studio, we get a sense, they pull back to get a sense of what filming is like. It's one of those down moments, sometimes when uh, Denny Villeneuve was interacting with the actors and also uh, the promotional photography as well. So how films are presented to us, the audience, many times when you talk about magazine covers, when you're talking about what you may see, you know, exclusive photos revealed uh, on blogs and websites, those come from the still photographers on set. And so to have this in book form, 
love it and it is it's one of my favorite things while we're waiting for Dune Part 2 uh, coming out later uh, in 2024. I got one final thing to wrap things up. Um, this is a poster and it's a really special poster. So a couple years ago, I recommended a coffee table book called Anime Architecture. It was from a museum curator, Stefan Rikeles of the Rikeles Gallery in Germany. And he had been a big fan of anime and work and to find the original artists behind some of the original cell uh, paintings and, and matte paintings, uh, the animators of classic anime films like Akira, Ghost in the Shell, Metropolis, um, even the Studio Ghibli films, and now has gotten the official uh, rights to create licensed reproductions of some of those background artworks. And not just, you know, photocopy reproductions, but perfect, meticulously color corrected reproductions. And so there's a series of posters that he's put out through his gallery, the Rikulis Gallery. And this is from Akira. It's the opening scene. It's that's it's if you've if you've watched the movie, the, the camera actually pans up across this freeway over Tokyo before a massive explosion. Um, and this is a one-to-one -one reprint of that original artwork. Uh, there's a higher end poster that he also sells and he works with old Japanese printmasters to perfectly reproduce in large format what that original painting was. Um, but the series of posters are more affordable and they have a bunch of them from Akira, a bunch of them from Ghost in the Shell, and then also a uh, new partnership with Studio Ghibli for Kiki's Delivery Service is their first one. So if you're a fan of any of those films, uh, this is just incredible artifact from that production and they're beautiful pieces of art on their own. So we'll have links to where you can find all of this stuff in the description. I'd love to hear what some of your favorite things were this year, things you picked up, things you tried, and over the coming days and weeks we'll have recommendations from the rest of the team as well. Wish you all a wonderful holidays. Hope you got through 2023 all right and we will see you in 2024. I'm Norm from Tested and see you then. Bye. Thanks for watching that video. Your support allows us to make more of this great content. And if you'd like to help us further, help tested.merch.com? Uh, tested-store.com. Tested-store.com. Head over to our merch store, tested. What is it? Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com. Head over to our store at tested store. Doctor, I can't even read what I wrote. Tested. Dash. Dash. Type in dash and dash. There we go. <laughs> I had to start that again. <laughs> All right, here we go. Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com.